Hello students. In this video, we are going to be starting the properties of addition and subtraction of integers. So in our previous video, we had done the exercise problems. We still need to complete the 10th one. I will make a separate video for this one. In this video, let us start with the properties of addition and subtraction of integers. So the first property that we are looking into is the closure property under addition. We have learned that a sum of two whole numbers is again a whole number. Okay. So when you add two whole numbers, it is a whole number. For example, 17 plus 24 is 41. We know that this property is known as the closure property for addition of whole numbers. Okay. Let us see whether this property is true for integers or not. So what exactly this closure property means is that take on any set, in this case the set of integers. Okay. Once you take the set of integers, if you take any two members of this set and conduct this operation of addition. So here we have a representation over here. So this is the operation we are conducting, that is addition. Is the result also belonging to the same set of integers? So I'll just zoom this in so you can see this better. Okay, so here we have the set of integers. And if you take any two members from the set of integers, you take one and then you take another member and then you conduct this operation. Is the result also belonging to the set of integers? So this is what it means to say that the set of integers is closed under addition. So the closure property of addition it means this one. Okay. So do you think integers are closed under addition? Before we look through an example, let us try and understand intuitively what addition is doing. Okay. So supposing you want to add a number to another number. In this case, add an integer to another integer. So what do we do in that case? For our example, let us take the case. Let us take the case where we are adding something to 1. So if we want to add say 5 to 1, we have learned that what we need to do is we need to start at 1. Okay. And then we need to move 5 times to the right. That is how we end up at 6. So this is the fundamental of addition of integers. You have to observe one thing here. If you keep on going, that is if you keep on adding bigger and bigger numbers, you will still remain on the same line. It doesn't matter how big of an integer you add. You just keep going to the right and you still remain on the same line. So what this arrow is indicating is that this line keeps going infinitely towards the positive side. Okay. So this should give you an idea about why when you add two integers, you will always remain on the number line. Now let us look into some examples. So here we have been given with a lot of examples starting with 17 plus 23, which is equal to 40. So plus 40, it's an integer. Okay. Similarly, if you do the following according to the four rules that we have learned, you will get the result that the result will always be an integer. Okay. So for this one, minus 10 plus 3. So we have learned that whenever we are adding a negative number to a positive number, what we need to do is we need to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number and keep the sign of the bigger number. So in this case, the answer is going to be minus 7. Okay. So minus 7 is also an integer. It's a negative integer. It is also an integer. So I will leave the rest of them to you. You will always observe that the result is an integer. Did you find a pair of integer whose sum is not an integer? So is it possible that we ever find a pair of integers whose sum is not an integer? This is not possible because we will always remain on the number line. 
okay since the addition of integers always gives us integers we say that integers are closed under addition so the closure property under addition holds for the set of integers so in general for any two integers a and b a plus b is an integer now let us consider the next property that is closure under subtraction what happens when we subtract an integer from another integer can we say that the difference is also an integer okay now let us go back to our number line so whenever we are subtracting one integer from another integer depending on their signs we either need to move left or to the right from our starting position okay so we have a separate explain explanation for this i will give the link to that in the description box below the idea is we follow these rules we follow the set of four rules that we have learned in our previous videos where we add a positive integer we move to the right where we add a negative integer we move to the left subtract a positive integer move to the left and subtract a negative integer we move to the right so regardless of what we are doing we are either moving to the right or left of the starting position so this means that we will always stay on the same line correct so observe that once we start from the starting position we are moving in the units of 1 okay so however what whatever is the quantity of the integer you are adding or subtracting you are moving that many times with the unit 1 to the right or left this means that you will always end up at an integer spot so this is the idea behind why when you add or subtract one integer from another integer or one integer to another integer you will always get a integer as your result so the examples that they have given is the first one is 7 minus 9 which is going to give us minus 2 okay so the result is a negative integer it is an integer the next one is 17 minus of minus 21 so we have learned that minus of minus anything is equal to plus so this will give us plus 38 we know that 38 is an integer so if you do this to all of the following eight examples eight no seven examples you will get the result as an integer all the times so what do you observe is there any pair of integers whose difference is not an integer can we say that integers are closed under subtraction yes we can see that integers are closed under subtraction so the set of integers is closed under both subtraction and addition and generally we say that if a and b are two integers then a minus b is also an integer so observe here that when we are using this representation that is when we are using letters as variables to represent integers they are independent of the sign so we have a and b over here a and b can be any integer positive or negative okay so if b is equal to um, if you take this example a is plus 17 and b is minus 21 okay so whenever you are using letters as variables they can be replaced by any positive or negative integer in this case next question is do the set of whole numbers satisfy this property do you think whole numbers are closed under uh, subtraction if you need a moment to think you can pause the video so for us to understand this better let us go back to the number line whole numbers consist only of numbers 0 and beyond to the right side of the number line so these uh, members of integers that is the negative integers do not belong to the set of whole numbers okay in this case do you think whole numbers are closed under subtraction take a couple of examples and try to figure out 
For our example, I want to subtract 4 from 2. Okay, so 2 minus 4. We know that for us to do this, we need to start from 2 and we have to move 4 times to the left. Okay, so we need to start here and we need to move 4 times to the left and we are going to end up at minus 2. Okay, so this is equal to minus 2. But minus 2 is not a whole number. Because it is not a whole number, it is an integer, the set whole numbers is not closed under subtraction. Okay, so whole numbers is not closed under subtraction, it is closed under addition. Next, let us move on to the third property that is the commutative property. So, we know that 3 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. That is, the whole numbers can be added in any order. In other words, addition is commutative for whole numbers. Can we say the same for integers also? So, do you think it is true that integers are also commutative? Let us take some examples. We have 5 plus of minus 6 is equal to minus 1 and minus 6 plus 5 is also equal to minus 1. Similarly, you need to do the following examples. This one is, is equal to minus 17 and the same thing holds for the other order also. So, if you consider all three examples, you will find out that you will get the same results regardless of the order. Okay, so if you have the first number first or the second number first, you will get the same result. Did you find any pairs of integers which for which the sum are different when the order is changed? So try to do it with more examples to see if you can find such a pair. But you will not be able to find such a pair because addition is commutative for integers. So, when we say addition is commutative for the set of integers, it means that when you are adding two members from the set of integers, the order is irrelevant. The order does not matter if you add it the other way. That is, if you flip the second number to be the first number, you will end up with the same result. Okay. So, in general, for any two integers a and b, we can say that a plus b is equal to b plus a. Okay. So, for us to get an intuition behind this, it is very simple for us to understand when it is in the case of positive integers. Okay. So, a simple example is if you had a apples with you and then somebody gives you b apples, that is the same as if you had b apples with you and then if somebody gives you a apples. The total number of apples that you are going to end up with is A plus B, which is the same as B plus A. So, the order of it does not matter. But when it comes to negative integers, for you to understand it using your intuition, you can take this analogy where we have discussed in the previous videos, where positive integers is like you have money with you, whereas negative integers is saying you owe money to someone. That is, you are debted by that negative integer. You have a debt that is equal to the amount of that negative integer. So, this is not very important. If it is confusing you, you can just keep this in mind that A plus B is equal to B plus A. But if you want to get an intuitive understanding, you can think along those lines. So, next is, we know that subtraction is not commutative for whole numbers. Is it commutative for integers? So, I will give a sort of thumb rule for you all. If a sum rule does not hold for a subset, then it also does not hold for the whole set, that is the superset. So, here we have our Venn diagram that is representing integers and whole numbers. We know that the commutative property does not hold for the whole numbers. So, if it does not hold for the whole numbers, then we cannot expect it to hold for the integers because the whole numbers are also part of the integers. Okay. 
but we can also take some examples so that we can understand it clearly. In this case, they have taken A to be equal to 5 plus 5 and B to be equal to minus 3. Okay, so is A minus B the same as B minus A? That is, is 5 minus of minus 3 equal to minus 3 minus 5? This is not true because this is going to substitute, is going to get substituted by a plus sign and we are going to end up with plus 8. Whereas B minus A, that is minus 3 minus 5 is going to give us a minus 8. Okay, so we can conclude that subtraction is not commutative for integers. Let us take a quick recap of what we have learnt in this video. We started out with the first property that is closure under addition. We learnt that integers are closed under addition. Next, we found out that integers are also closed under subtraction. Whenever there is a closure property, we have to find out if any operation, in this case addition and subtraction, is going to result in a member that is also belonging to the same set. Okay, so in this case, A plus B is always an integer, so is A minus B. So we found that addition and subtraction are both holding closure over the set of integers. Next, we went through the commutative property and we found out that integers are commutative for whole number. Addition is commutative for integers and whole numbers. However, subtraction is not commutative for whole numbers or integers. Okay, so in our next video, we will find out and we will talk about the associative property. I will see you all in the next video.